The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Do you ever feel that planning for the future is a hard uphill task because you don't make a lot of money? Do you wonder how you'll ever own your own home or send your children through college or provide for a pleasant life of retirement? Then here's good news. Lots of families with average incomes solve these problems if they know the answers. And the man who really does know the answers is your friendly, helpful, equitable society agent, representing one of the greatest institutions in the world. In about 14 minutes, I'd like to tell you more about equitable society men and how they can help you enjoy the many advantages of membership in the Equitable Society. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, Extortion. Its title, The Bridal Shakedown. Why intelligent people become criminals will probably always be a mystery. After all, even average intelligence is all that's required to teach a person that crime does not pay. In the past 25 years, tremendous strides have been made in learning what makes us humans click. But there are still many unknown factors. So it is difficult to explain why a person with a good IQ, an individual with many qualities and abilities which should enable him to earn an honest living, would rather risk prison than settle down and go to work. We must never for a minute underestimate the brain power of many criminals who match their wits against the forces of law and order. The sad truth is that they are often very intelligent and industrious. Tonight's FBI file is a case in point. Tonight's file opens in a gymnasium and health club located in the business district of a large eastern city. In a small room in this establishment, a muscular rubber is giving a young man a massage. Too heavy, Mr. Spencer. Oh, feel good, Herb. Uh, Up around the back of my neck a little, hmm? Uh, Sure. Big night last night, Mr. Spencer. Uh, Murders. I'll take it easier on the head. (laughs) Uh, Common complaint today. Everybody's got hangovers. Were you all out together? Uh, to tell you the truth, I don't know where I was. Huh? That's a new thing with me now. I have so many drinks and draw a blank. Hey, that's bad. Yeah, I know. That's all behind me, Herb. I'm on the wagon as of today. Yeah, that won't do you no harm. When are you getting married, Mr. Spencer? Uh, two weeks. Oh, that's well. <laughs> I kind of like it myself. Well, you will live. Okay. Thanks. You just relax there a while, Mr. Spencer. Right. If you should fall asleep, when would you like me to call you? In an hour. Take it easy. Okay, Herb. (sighs) Who's that? Hello, Mr. Spencer. Uh, Who are you? Uh, My name is Ken. Joe Ken. Well, what do you want? I'd like to talk to you. What about? (laughs) It's a personal matter. Mind if I sit down? Look, I'm trying to get a little sleep. It can wait. What's all this about? I'm a friend of Lucy's. Who's Lucy? (laughs) You kidding? I asked you a question. I suppose you don't remember last night, either. No, I don't. <laughs> last night, you and Lucy got married. What? You heard me. Why, is this a rib of some kind? You think so? Here, take a look at this. Huh. Marriage license. Is that your signature? Well, 
Why, yes. You'll also find your name on the register of the Central Hotel. You and Lucy spent your honeymoon there. I don't know anyone named Lucy. You just met her last night. It was a real quick romance. Look, I'm already engaged. I'm getting married in two weeks. Mister, you're already married. I don't believe you. Okay, suppose you check up on this marriage license. Thank it. It's a photostack copy. Lucy has the original. Well, you can also check the register of the Central Hotel. And then you'll hear from me later. Some more coffee, Wayne? No, thanks, Mother. <laughs> I can't tell you what a pleasure it is for us to be having breakfast together. <laughs> you mean novelty, don't you? <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> anyway, I am grateful. <laughs> Mother. Hmm? Did you hear me come home night before last? Night before last? Why, Wayne, you didn't come home at all. I, I thought you stayed at the club. Oh, of course. That, that's right, I did. Why do you ask? Well, nothing important. Oh, goodness, I almost forgot. <laughs> A special delivery letter came for you early this morning. Here you are, dear. Thank you, Mother. I didn't know if it were important enough to waken you. Something wrong? Excuse me, Mother. I'll see you later. Several hours later in the local FBI field office, Wayne Spencer's mother is being greeted by Special Agent Jim Taylor. Won't you sit down, Mrs. Spencer? Oh, thank you, Mr. Taylor. Now, what can I do for you? Well, uh, this is a matter concerning my son. Yes? He, uh, he, he doesn't know I've come here to see you, but I, I just had to. Now, what is it, Mrs. Spencer? Uh, uh, Wayne received a special delivery letter this morning. And when he read it, I could see that it upset him very much. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I tried to question him about it, but he left the breakfast table and walked out. Now, go on, please. Uh, well, in his excitement, he left the letter behind, and I, I did something I've never done before in my life. I, I read that letter. And? It was sent anonymously. It demanded that he pay $50,000 to straighten out some matter. It also said that if he didn't pay, his impending marriage would be ruined and he would suffer bodily harm. I see. Oh, did you bring that letter with you, Mrs. Spencer? Oh, yes, yes, I have it right here. Oh, here you are. Thank you. Has anyone else handled this other than you and your son? Oh, no. Fine. I want to have it analyzed for fingerprints. Uh, Mr. Taylor, as I told you, my son doesn't know I've come here. Oh, well, Mrs. Spencer, you did the right thing in coming. This is an extortion letter. Now, whether the basis for the threat is real or imagined, the sender has broken the law, and it's our job to find him. I'd like to go over and talk to your son at once. Joe. Joe. Huh? Were you sleeping? Yeah. Yeah, I guess... Maybe I was. I don't know how you do it. What do you mean? Sleep at a time like this. What are you talking about? I'm waiting for that guy Spencer to call. I swear to you, all afternoon I've been so nervous I've broken two fingernails. Lucy, I spent two months laying this thing out. Nothing can go wrong. You'll really think he married me? Well, license is legitimate, ain't it? Yeah, but you married me with that license, not him. I've worked ten hours a day practicing his signature. He'll think he signed it. Same thing with the hotel register. You honestly think he drew a blank that night? Baby, that Mickey I fed him took care of that. Well, I still can't believe he'll call. He... He's got to call it. Look at the spot he's in. With his girl, you mean? That's right. Did you give him our number in the letter? No, stupid. I, I called that health club, left a message for him to call here. Oh. Say, I just thought of something. What now? Well, with us being already married and then getting married again the other night, does that make us bigamous? No, just me. Why? 
because you've got two heads. Oh, <laughs> that's cute. Oh, gee, do you think... Shut up. Hello? I'm Mr. Spencer calling you, Mr. Kent. Oh, put him on. Right. Go ahead, please. Hello? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Spencer. Are you the man that came to the health club? Yeah, that's right. I received your letter this morning. Well? I'd like to see you. Well, come around here. What's your address? It's uh, Lake Apartments, 82 Maple. What time? Six o'clock. Very well. Yeah, see you later, Mr. Spencer. Well, honey, what'd I tell you? Go ahead, Mr. Taylor. After you, please. Very well. Let me take your hat. Surely. There you are. Is that you, Mother? Yes, Wayne. That's your son? Yes. Um, uh, come this way, please. Thanks. I'm here in the living room, Mother. Wayne, I've uh, brought home company. Really? Darling, I want you to meet Mr. Taylor. This is my son, Wayne. How do you do, Mr. Spencer? Wayne... Mr. Taylor is a special agent of the FBI. Oh? I... I asked him to come here because... Well, I... Wayne, I read the letter you received this morning. I had to. I saw how it upset you. Oh, Mother, you don't have to make a Supreme Court case of it. There's nothing too terrible about reading a letter. Mr. Spencer, have you any idea who sent it to you? Yes, I have. Really? It was that clown Frank Blakely. You know, that boy I play squash with. But... but... Why should oh, he... Oh, Mother, the whole thing was a practical joke. What? How do you know? Well, Frank's a practical joker. I suspected him immediately. I confronted him with a letter today, and he confessed all. Oh, thank heaven. So I'm afraid, Mr. Taylor, you're on a wild goose chase. Oh, my goodness, that's so... I do apologize, Mr. Taylor. <laughs> oh, that isn't necessary. I'm delighted that it turned out the way it has. Most extortion cases haven't this happy an ending. Do you handle many of them, do you? Well, enough of them to have worked up a pretty strong loathing for the people who send threatening letters. How many do you catch? I don't want to sound immodest, but we bet pretty close to a thousand. Well. Mrs. Spencer, I guess I'd better be running along. Joe, that must be him. It could be. Who is it? Wayne Spencer. Oh, okay. Ah, hi, Mr. Spencer. Hello. Oh, come on in. Very well. Wayne. Huh? Oh, Wayne, baby. Oh, That's Lucy, your wife. Oh. Honey, don't you remember me? No. Well, that certainly isn't very... Now, well, Lucy, Mr. Spencer came here to talk business. Let's give him a chance. Okay. Yeah. Uh, first, did you check on the uh, marriage license in the hotel? Yes. And? Uh, it, it could be my signature when I've been drinking. Mr. Spencer, I've told you right Look, along... Look, we're wasting time. Now, I'll concede that I probably got drunk and married this girl, and, and you've apparently set a price for her calling the marriage off. Let's get right down to that. <laughs> it's a... Pleasure to do business with you. How much? Well, you got my letter. Fifty thousand. Now that's out of the question. What's your idea of a payoff? I have it right here with me. Two thousand dollars. Two thousand? Why, you cheap... Ah, quiet. Look, Mr. Spencer, two thousand don't even get you inside the ground. Well, that's all I can raise. Don't give me that. I'm telling you the truth. Look, your mother's got scratch, your girlfriend's loaded... That has nothing to do with me. Well, best I can do for you is um, not 10% off for cash. The best you can do? Yeah, that's right. Well, how do you figure so strongly in this? An old friend of the family. Then I'd advise you to take this 2000 Don't you do it, Joe. Uh, don't worry, sweetheart. I won't. Very well. You leave only one course of action. What's that? I'm going to the FBI. Huh? On what ground? That was an extortion letter I received today. They'd be very happy to prosecute you for sending it. Is that a fact? Yes. Now, will you take the 2000 No. 
And I'm going to turn you in. You're not going any place. Joe, I'm glad you hit him. What a piker. We will return in just a moment to tonight's exciting case from the official files of your FBI. If you worry about the future, if you have financial problems, then I'd like to have you listen to the experience of Mr. Earl Young. The way he solves his problems may be very helpful to you. Will you tell us, Mr. Young, why you decided to become a member of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States? Well, Mr. Keating, I don't make big money, and I've got a little boy and a little girl to raise. Now, I know my Social Security won't be enough to keep them well-fed and well-housed and well-clothed if something may happen to me. But I didn't know how much they would need each week or how to provide it for them if I did know. Then you talked about a chart that would help figure it out. Well, that's our famous equitable fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. It's free to everyone. Your equitable representative will be glad to give you one. Uh, then what happened, Mr. Young? Well, I called our equitable man, and he brought over the chart. When I knew the facts, it was as easy as ABC to face them. My equitable man showed me how to plan to keep my family in comfort until my youngest child finished high school. That's the equitable family security plan. That's right. And believe me, that was a lucky day when I phoned my equitable man. And a swell guy, too. Friendly, helpful... And he knows the answers. That's a perfect description of a typical equitable representative. He's helpful, friendly, and he knows the answers. He's a specialist, ready and able to help you solve your problems at all times and without obligation. He'll help you to take the uncertainty out of the future and bring you peace of mind. So right now, consult your local telephone directory for the name of your local equitable representative. Or write to the Equitable Society, care of this station. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to tonight's FBI file, The Bridal Shakedown. Fear is the extortioner's stock in trade. The dictionary defines fear as the painful emotion caused by a sense of impending danger or evil. The key word here is impending. The extortioner often manages to create a sense of danger where none actually exists. Take Wayne, for instance. There was really no need for him to have gone to Joe's apartment. There he made his biggest mistake and impending danger became real danger. For, as Special Agent Taylor said, the extortion letter itself constituted the real crime. If ever you should be threatened illegally, your FBI urges you to recognize this point, to refuse to be bullied, to call upon your law enforcement officials, and to remember also, an extortioner rarely stops after his first successful attempt. Tonight's file continues in Special Agent Taylor's apartment. It is after midnight. He is just preparing for bed as... Hello. Hello, Mr. Taylor. This is Mrs. Spencer. Oh, yes, Mrs. Spencer. I'm terribly sorry to disturb you. Oh, that's quite all right. I, I called your office and they gave me your home number. What's on your mind? Well, I, I'm calling about Wayne. Yes? I'm terribly worried about him. He left here right after you did this afternoon. He was presumably going to drop off at the health club for a minute. And then he, he had a dinner date with Mildred, his fiancée. Mm -hmm. After that, he was taking both of us to the concert. But he hasn't kept any of these appointments. And you haven't heard from him? No, not directly. I called our lawyer, and I learned that Wayne had gone to see him this afternoon right after he left the house. Oh. He asked for $2,000. He said he needed it desperately. Oh, I see. Well, did he get the money? Yes. Mrs. Spencer, I'll come right over to your house. Yeah. 
Come right in the living room, Mr. Taylor. Thank you. Oh, I am grateful to you for coming over. That's my job, Mrs. Spencer. (laughs) Not to cater to a nervous woman's fears. Well, I'm sorry to say it looks like your fears are justified. About the extortion note? Yes, your son's getting that 2000 from your lawyer. Certainly makes it appear he wanted it for a payoff. Oh, but he told us this afternoon that the note was a practical joke. Uh, it was just to alleviate our suspicion, I imagine. Where could he be now? That's the important thing. We, we have no idea where he's gone. Tell me, did he mention anything to your lawyer as to where he might be going? No, he just said he was going to his club, the health club. Hmm. Have you called there? Oh, yes. What did they tell you? He called earlier this afternoon. What for? To see if he'd gotten any messages. And had he? Oh, I didn't ask. Well, that could be very important, Mrs. Spencer. Why? He could have been contacting the club because he expected a message there. Oh. Will you let me have their number, please? I'll phone them at once. Joe, he's coming, too. Yeah. Well, should I get him some ice or something? What for? That lump on his head. Oh, leave him alone. You may grow a few more before we're done. Uh, on my head. It hurts, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it feels as if... Oh, it's you. Yeah, that's right. I'm still here. Uh-huh. Let, let me get up. Should you, Joe? Yeah, you, you can sit in that chair. Uh, look, mister, don't try anything because something new's been added since you left us. This gun. I see it. Uh, think you're ready to talk business again now? There's nothing to discuss. Yes, there is. We, um, we had a board of directors meeting. We decided to cut the price. To 2000 No, no, 25000 Not interested. Well, we decided something else in that meeting. Really? Yeah, strategy. How to make you pay the 25 G? That's not possible. Well, not even if we called the newspapers and gave them the story on your marriage to Lucy? They wouldn't listen to a cheap hoodlum like you. Well, you're forgetting. I got proof. But that'd take too much time. I got an even better way. And that's to call your girlfriend Mildred. I'm not listening to any of these shakedowns. You know something, Joe? I bet he don't think you'd have nerve enough to call her. Well, you think I should show him? Yeah. Huh. Give me that address book. Sure. Here. What? That's my address book. Yeah, part of it. you passed out. Uh, Lucy, the number's um, uh, Quincy 7 2932. 2932. Yeah, get her on the phone. Okay. Wait. Huh? Never mind. Oh, call her, baby. Hello. There's never anybody on that switchboard. Yes? Hello. Uh, This is Mrs. Kent. Lucy! Yes, Mrs. Kent? Mrs. Kent. Do you still think you should make that call? Hang up, stupid. But, Joe, I did... Shut up and start packing. Leaving town, folks? Yeah, on your two Gs. But before we go, I'm going to make sure that you keep quiet. This is the apartment right here, Mr. Taylor. You got a key? Yes, sir. But like I told you, the Kents left here five minutes ago. They had bags with them like they were going away. Oh, I'd still like to see the apartment, please. Sure thing. Now, this should do it here. Kent say where they were going? Uh, no, sir. You know if they took a cab? Well, they didn't say. There aren't many this hour of the morning. Mm. Go ahead, sir. Thanks. This furniture belongs to the house. They rented the place this way. Oh, I see. Hey, what's that? I don't know. Sounds like it's coming from behind this door over here. That's a closet. There's someone in there. He's locked in. I've got a key that should fit that. Good. This guy in here could be the one you're looking for. Yeah, could be Mr. Spencer. There. Hey, bound and gagged. Yeah, untie the gag, will you? I'll get the ropes. Sure thing. Is he the missing guy? Yep. There you go, mister. Thank you. I'll have your legs untied in a minute, Spencer. Uh, thanks, Mr. Taylor. Well, where are the cant? Uh, they've gone. Uh, where to? Well, I, I was hoping you'd have the answer to that one. No, that doesn't. Here, I'll give you in. Uh, 
thanks. Well, Spencer, your practical joke didn't turn out so well, did it? I'm sorry. Well, whatever your problem was, you were a fool to attempt to handle it yourself. I know that now. Tell me, did uh, you pay these people any money? They forcibly took 2000 from me. Get away money, huh? Yeah, I imagine so. Well, I guess I can kiss it goodbye. I don't imagine they'll be easy to find. I guess something that might help. What is it? Let me get to the phone, please. Joe, what are you doing? Putting the bags in the trunk compartment. What for? So we'll have them, stupid. Yeah, but if the car won't start, you'll only have to take them out again. The car will start as soon as we get that wire connected. Well, when will that be? Lucy, you heard the man yourself. He said he was going up to the front of the garage to get a new wire. Then he'd be right back. But he hasn't come back. Oh. No. Look, Joe, my complaint is we've kept the car in this garage for over two years. We certainly deserve better service than this. Oh, shut up. Joe. Now what is it? It's Mr. Spencer. Hello there, Joe. Huh? Huh. How did you get here? Uh, Mr. Taylor, I'll let you explain that. I found a bill from this garage in your apartment, Joe. Huh? I called here just before you arrived. The attendant was kind enough to stall you until we could get here. Who are you? I'm a special agent of the FBI. Joe Kent and his wife, Lucy, were both tried and convicted for extortion. They were sentenced to long terms in a federal penitentiary. And so the careers of two more shakedown artists were ended by your FBI but ended only after the potential victim had placed himself in great jeopardy by attempting to deal with the criminals himself. You wouldn't ask a plumber to pull a tooth for you, nor would you ask a dentist to fix a leaky pipe. Yet you will, you do, ask yourself to perform a job of dealing with criminals when there is at your disposal every type of law enforcement agency you need. Remember this, and do your part in curbing the crime wave. When you receive any kind of threat, Notify your local police, or your state law enforcement officers, or your FBI. Crime is their business. Believe it or not, nearly everybody, no matter how much money he makes, believes he would be happier if he made more money. So the answer is not how much you make, but what you do with what you have. That means careful planning. Now, if you are not an expert, why not consult a man who can help you plan? Consult your neighbor, your local Equitable Society representative. Security is his business, your security. He'll be glad to discuss your problems without any obligation to you. Simply consult your local telephone directory for the name of your local representative of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, armed robbery. Its title, the 16-millimeter stick-up. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were James Dobson, Stan Farrar, Ann Morrison, Vicki Raff, and Paul Richards. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The 16-millimeter stick-up on This Is Your FBI.